Hey, what's going on guys? Silver Kisha Doctor here and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. It's been a while. It's been a good while since the last time I played Doki Doki Literature Club and I apologize. It's because I was because I had stuff to do during the during uh, around Christmas time. I had stuff to do around New Year's, but I can finally come back and sit down and play some more Doki Doki Literature Club. And it's been a and um and I've been wanting to come back to this game for a while, but now I have the final now I have an actual open opportunity to, so we're gonna go ahead and continue playing on this game. Although, I forgot to put a disclaimer on one other thing, one other thing in the last episode, because my partner did uh, spoil, did give one spoiler a while back, uh, and I completely forgot about it until he pointed it out to me again, and it involves Sayori. I'm not gonna say what it is because some of you, because there's some of you that probably don't know about it, but. When the time comes, for those of you that know what it is, don't expect like a big, big reaction when the time comes. So, I mean, it'll still be disturbing, but it'll still be, you guys, you guys get the point. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get into this. So, okay. Um, we're making another poem. All right, so, hmm, essence, all right. And yeah, I did learn that like each of the characters that bounce up like that every time you choose one, that you get dialogue based on that character. So, and we got Yuri last time. So let's try someone else. Let's try for someone else. Joy. Okay, we got Sa okay Sayori. Um, Vance. <laughs> Nibble. Imagination. Quite. <laughs> Fluffy. <laughs> Giggle. <laughs> I'm not choosing these intentionally. I promise you I'm not. <laughs> uh, I guess Starscape mu music. Okay. Poof. <laughs> That's the first thing that pops up. <laughs> the first thing I choose is boof. <laughs> hmm. Valentine. Even though we're like a month, literally a month, at, well, somewhere over a month ish away. Somewhere over a month from Valentine's. Uh, Desire. Puppy! Loud, <laughs> like me. Pout. <laughs> I can't. I can't pout with a straight face. Um, precious. Hey. Right. Holiday. Bubbles. What does Doki Doki get to? Oh, okay. It goes to Natsuki. <laughs> then again, I kind of—I was thinking either Sayori or uh, Natsuki. I didn't really think. Let's see. Um, fantasy. Okay. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting today. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Silver. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's the simplest th It's a. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh. Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. <laughs> uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets an open. Then, she, retur she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. 
<laughs> what she hope? What? what? Did you want me to buy you for you or something? God damn it, Sayori. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not. Th that's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If I had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all of your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! <laughs> and so that only leaves the one option. Uh, <laughs> I give up. <laughs> Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Huh? I wasn't listening or anything. I- it was just... something in my book. Yuri... Tell Silver to let me borrow some money! <laughs> Don't get me involved in that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little, there's a little devil inside us. Inside all of us, isn't there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she, would bring me, she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. I Come on, give me more credit than yet, Sayori. <laughs> Plap. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my re restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> It, w it pretty much was. Thank you, Natsuki. <laughs> Natsuki? That's so nice of you. <laughs> I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the raptor and takes a big bite. So good. <laughs> Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours are really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why would you why do why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, and then wraps her, her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. God. Girl! <laughs> hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I left as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can't you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is into the club room. 
strange. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have you... Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just ha she probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't th you don't think she she has a <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the, the door swing open. The door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica Monica chooses this the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quiz quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh... Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost—I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware of you—I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a, b a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Silver. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean to put... I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love to and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave outside outside Yuri's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cooking. Somehow? Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappears into the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. I'm probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem was that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way to sh of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come up with the in the first place if, if it's a literature club if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do we can do anything any we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's very it's rare to hear her deliberating things. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Uh, well, I guess I could... Cupcakes! <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Huh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. Th that works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes really speak gr to my creative tummy. Cupcake as it is, then... I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the events itself. Of the event. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. 
I'd like me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayuri can put her mind into things and make them come to life. I guess that's why I ended up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. <laughs> Out of my eyes to find Sayuri's face filling my vision. <laughs> a bit too close. A bit. That's a bit close. Oh god damn it! I missed that. What was that? I nearly fall out of my chair. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. He. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? N not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... it's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look at your hair. It's sticking out all around here. Eh? I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush. You really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. It's more than just your hair. Look at your bow. It isn't even straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there, right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. <laughs> hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer button up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh. I will admit that's kind of a cute visual. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well... I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh... I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Ugh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have uh, no you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. D don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so. Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Whew! That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms around her, around, her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying it like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these emb embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on getting to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> 
I guess we all are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come and wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Ah, uh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Silver, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Who should read my poem from? Okay. Hmm. Let's think about this for a moment. Okay, there we go. Let's go from the bottom up this time, because we went from the top to bottom. Let's go bottom up. So, Monica. Hi again, Silver. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, oh, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may, that may be the case. But there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It's not that the two of you are really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into, into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone would be so- someone so happy would enjoy sh sad things, too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit, either. But anyway, you wanna read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do, too. Alright, let's take a look. Ooh, a long one. Save me. The colors. They won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating wo waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, scene. Cosine? I'm so, sorry, I don't, I'm not that big into literature, and, uh... <laughs> so I apologize if some of these words I mispronounce. Piercing. Wait, that's the wrong line. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless... Load me? Um, that's a bit fishy. Okay. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. It's kind of like playing with my space on a paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to see what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be a, a, as abstract as physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. 
When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Damn, fourth wall breaks. <laughs> what are you, fucking Deadpool? You never know what you might- You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That raises a few questions for me regarding about Monica. Is she Deadpool? <laughs> Wait, I can skip. I don't want to skip this. I'm just. Can you skip it? I feel like it's important. Hmm. Beauty. Uh, is it my turn? Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Hmm. I see. It's a bit different. I respect if you're trying different things, Silver. Were you inspired by Natsuki's poem? Or Sayori's, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. I write them for myself. Not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Beauty. Eh? I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I would probably just do a terrible job. I, I see. I'm sorry. My stupid mind, it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to... You need to work your brain like turning a bun like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. Then write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have um well an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Isn't this po- is it- is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands- hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a, for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by a scuffering- by a scuffering- scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I- Noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. Okay, I'm sorry. It's been ages since I last read cursive. <laughs> well, I mean, I've read cursive, but like this is this is like elegant cursive. This is nice. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the con of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon is. Is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon, the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I bra I <clears throat> excuse me, I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic pa Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread. And I feed myself again. Um, I was a bit more daring with this one than yesterday's. No kidding. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. It. That is true. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this what this poem was about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. 
Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah. Yeah, if I take it as a face value, at a face value, then I... God... <laughs> then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different po people can relate into their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more u unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have any anything like that, Silver? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Alright. Natsuki! <laughs> Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Uh, aren't you- aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? N no I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I got lucky with this one. Y yeah exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems as cute, I mean. I mean, well written. No, I mean... Ah, so that's how it is. My poem is cute? N no Why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Natsuki shows my poem back towards me. <laughs> Reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. It's too cute and doki doki. It would only impress, you know, girls who like those kinds of things. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Think about your tastes, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something too. Don't forget what, what who the real pro is. Amy likes spiders. Huh. You know what I learned what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. It Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing voice my f sing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. The story's kind of deep. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like sp start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she, if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. I like spiders. I don't love spiders, but I like spiders. And I'm not gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can't sometimes you can't explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about everyone who think it's about how everyone thinks my That doesn't matter. I it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby, or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of people will find out. They make fun of it. You or think less of you. 
<sighs> Why am I yawning so much? But that's just people- but that's just- but that just makes people stupid! Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Udi wrote something similar today. Did you say- did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Not to get us trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And you only made me feel v insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too. So look forward to it. Alright. And last but not least, Sayori. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Silver. Eh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Uh, you're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori. You must be seri- you must be seriously overact- overreacting. I'm not a good writer after all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yudi's, Yudi's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem, it's a silver poem! <laughs> and that makes me- that makes it feel extra special. Like, I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure if that exactly how I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why do why don't you at least try giving so, giving it some thought? Aw, oh, you want to write it so, something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about it yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyways, let's see. Hmm. I guess it. I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes I like a bit of. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? In the gray? Bittersweet! Close enough. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you like something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting a bit better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Silver. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem then, okay? Bottles. Hi. <clears throat> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the b like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine. All rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my 
with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. Okay. But there's no time to waste. I put it in the bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts and bottles. All in a row. My collection makes me a lots of makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes the bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my friends my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow off du I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through the lo my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them off. I mean, pull them from the shelf. One after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is an echo, 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 inside my head. That's pretty deep. Holy crap. Saudi, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this, coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really keeping- I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express th myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sarity has always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping in no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to see the pessimist. Pessimist. Blech. <laughs> Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if anyone could come sit at the front of the at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it as simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been, has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the, for the event. Ah, uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah. We're gonna keep- we're going to have a- be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to be let- we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. <clears throat> I need water, seriously. I'm sorry. Sayori's putting in it- putting it all on the posters in case if anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start po putting those posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well, I did. Did you really think that it's a... Did you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. 
but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it. Imagine it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems aloud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fates of this club. If we start the event and each put a good on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all makes it... And if all, if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I didn't think- I think that Sayori and Monica have been- have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out- help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Whew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri de dejectedly glances around at everyone else's ex expectant faces. I guess I really don't have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. <laughs> Poor Yuri. Seriously. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. A clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Society looks amazed. Beauty has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the, re the, re the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Wah! Yuri, Yuri's all fu Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she quiet she walks quiet quickly over to the podium. The poem is called Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called The ap After Image of a Crimson's Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transformed into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure, and she... what was that? And turns into the structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse to... 
into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around here, as, she's, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she, she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her, into her seat. Aww. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Sayuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I see, I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come, out of, come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Meaning this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone that I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Silver liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that, that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I really don't understand. In other words, I've seen, po I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more f force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to I'm going to pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Silver. It's not like I can compare you got compare you guys anyway. Might as well let Silver lower the everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. It'll j I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step, step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. Make me feel terribly awkward. <laughs> oh god, they're all staring. <laughs> I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry if I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that you'll improve in, that you'll, that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begr begrudgingly gets out her suit out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once he starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. <clears throat> Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do this again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of people, in front of other people would be way easier. I could put it on whatever face I want for other people. 
but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... I can kind of relate to that with Natsuki, if I'm completely honest. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea on what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so make sure- so let me know ahead of time when you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me feel very ha- really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to, to, write our, to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make, it, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Silver. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I will come up with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual, than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her own words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... I'm not sure if it matters here. Hang on, I'm gonna save real fast. Hang on a second. Okay. Hmm. If I'm honest... Cuz... Cuz if someone asks, like if they ask you, then... Then you should have the option to do that. But Sayori, well, with Sayori, she always walks alone. She always walks alone, and especially on the streets. We, I'm thinking way too much of this. Um, then again, since as I said earlier, since Yudi asks, I guess Yudi walking up with Yudi, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean. Given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I'd just like to think about it. It's not long before you need me anymore, no Before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out what you're seeing things in your head. How you're so how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm feeling left awkward. Left feeling awkward. But it was kinda her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? All right, so oh boy, that so much happened in already one episode. Because I've been recording for almost an hour now. 
But I'm gonna leave this episode here. I know it's only been one. I know I've only recorded for one whole day, but a lot. But there's a lot that happens within one whole day if you really go through with it. But um, I don't know if it'll continue on like this, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes from here. But uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this is gonna turn out. So. With this, I'm just gonna leave it here. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm super excited. I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna continue on recording more and more on this to continue on because I'm gonna make sure to finish the game to its entirety. So, thank you guys so much again. And of course, as usual, I will see you guys next video. Jimata!